fun facts to throw out there from these people? Yeah. About a few of them, not about all of them. Welcome back, Derby fans. We've got our final game of the night. Minnesota Roller Derby All-Stars versus Denver Roller Derby Bruising Altitude. Minnesota in black, Denver in white for this game. And it's gonna be Denver out front lead jammer. That is Rat, former Minnesota All-Star skater, homo erratic, known lovingly as Rat, on her jersey. And Rat gets through for four points. As beloved Minnesota blocker Dougie goes to the penalty box. Breezes does make it out of the pack for Minnesota Roller Derby. And Rhett calls it off before Breezes can get back and score any points. The final score on that jam is six points for Bruising Altitude and zero points for Minnesota. All right. We've had a wonderful weekend so far here at the Have a Nice Day Tournament here at lovely Charles M. Schultz Arena, or Highland Arena in St. Paul. And this is the big culmination of day two, game number eight. Centripetal force for Minnesota Roller Derby gets lead jammer status. Cosmo, hot on her trail though, runs into those Minnesota blockers. And two of them are headed to the penalty box. So Minnesota down. Minnesota down, two blockers. Cosmo will see if they can. Centripetal Force makes her way through the pack one more time. Clears out most of the bench, or most of the penalty box. Scores 16 points on that jam. Cosmo scores six, making the score 16 to 12. That's a lot of scoring, two jams into this one. It is. It seems like these teams have a little pep in their step so far, huh? Yes. Lexicutor on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby. Vinny on the line for Bruising Altitude in Denver. The floor has looked slippery. I wonder if it is. Yeah. As we saw Lexi go down there. You know, these packs aren't moving too fast, but within these packs, there's so much action and activity happening. Just everybody, feet moving constantly all around. Some really powerful skating going on out here as Lexi flies through for another four points. Four more for Lexi in Minnesota as the pack had split up there. Now Denver has two 
skaters headed to the penalty box, one being the jammer, Vinny, as the jam is called. Those two penalties will start. So Minnesota out to a quick 32 to 12 lead after three jams, after being down 6-0 after one. Remember, this is Minnesota All-Stars A team versus Denver's Bruising Altitude B team, we believe. Although there's some really great skaters out there that we know for Denver. Chip a tooth, the jammer of record gets through, totally untouched, lead jammer. Chip, a beloved Minnesota Roller Derby All-Star skater and jammer. This is gonna be Chip's last game as an all-star for a couple of years because Chip is going back to school. Chip is already too smart and I think this is a bullshit decision on her part, but it's her life, so she gets to decide. Yep. So Chip a Tooth makes two scoring passes before Vinny can get out of the penalty box. And now three as Vinny re-enters the pack for Denver. And we had a star pass to Bold Move Buttons. And Chippa continues their scoring with 20 points thus far, and we'll see if she can keep going. Chippa Tooth, of course, a former Colorado resident, I believe skated in Boulder prior to coming to Minnesota, so some relationship there as well. as Brutal tries to wedge in some offensive blocking on Chip's behalf. A bruising two minute jam. Chip finishes that out with 27 points added to Minnesota Roller Derby's total taking them up to 59 and bruising altitude at 12. A 27 point jam for Chip. Ooh. Dang. Wow. Yolita Applebaum. That's kind of a fun name. That's a fun name for sure, yeah. Yolita Applebaum is lead jammer for bruising altitude. Whoopsie Daisy. It's always fun when there's a whoopsie jam. Moose definitely up against Breezes for Minnesota Roller Derby. Breezes does get lead jammer status. Moose definitely also, I think, did you already mention this, former Minnesota Roller Derby All-Star. Fun to see her here with Denver. Taking some big hits from that Minnesota Roller Derby defense but does make it through. Breezes calls it off before Moose definitely can get back and score any points. Breezes scoring six on that jam. 
the pack is feeling a little chaotic, but also really strong in this game thus far. There's a lot of movement. I'm not sure what's happening all the time, but it looks yeah. like it is intense. Yeah, it's really energetic. It's a really energetic pack. I mean, these teams are excited to be here and Jazz to give it their all. I think having a few, you know, beloved former Minnesota All-Stars on this Denver team is part of that juice. Jamming this time we have Homo Erratic, or Rat, for Bruising Altitude, and Centripetal Force for Minnesota Roller Derby. Rat does have lead, though she got sucked back into the pack. And Rat calls it off before Centripetal Force can score any points. We need an official timeout so our officials can discuss whatever they need to discuss. The truth is it's not really my business what they discuss. No, but, you know. I'm always curious. Yeah, for, you can be curious. You know, they're doing their jobs. It's going to be fine. Ooh. Well, let's see. Meanwhile, at the moment, we're, we do have in the penalty box none other than Denver's captain, Gay of Reckoning, yet another former Minnesota skater, much beloved, gave me a big hug when I got here, which was very sweet. So excited. It's fun to have so many former Minnesota Roller Derby All-Stars on the Denver team and getting yeah. to see them again. Absolutely. Just, you know, seeing old friends. I've missed you. How are you? How's your life? Your face is still awesome. Yeah. I'm sure your skating is too. Much love and admiration. Absolutely. Denver's Benz coach has a fabulously shiny, shirtless, hooded situation I, going on. I think on. you meant sleeveless. That, that's a shirt, not shirtless, sleeveless. Sleeveless, yeah. <laughs> Sleeveless. That's right. <laughs> that's why. That's yeah. I got. I got nothing for that. That's just my bad. That's why I should leave this to the professionals. <laughs> but so, it is very shiny. It is. It's so shiny. I just. I had no more words. It's easy to get distracted. Okay, Cosmo and Lexi Cuter, the jammers of record for their teams. We've seen each of them so far, but it's going to be Lexi for Minnesota out front lead. Breaking through first as the penalty box is now empty. For a second, and now Brutal is headed over to the penalty box. Cosmo just did a great duck under uh, one of her own blockers and then was able to break through on the inside to get onto a scoring pass for Denver. And Lexi's going to call that one off. Uh, three more points, I believe, are being signaled for Minnesota to zero for Denver on that jam. There's a lot of chanting for Chip whenever she takes the line. You just heard that from the audience. It's just so nice to be here seeing all our friends. Yeah. And Vinny on the line for Bruising Altitude. Chippa gets out first in his lead jammer status. Vinny gets hung up on Dougie. And Dougie gets a penalty for something. Again, Minnesota in black, Denver in white in this game. Oh. 
Whoopsie daisy on through the crowd for lead jammer status for Minnesota Roller Derby. Yolita Applebaum also out. Whoopsie calls it. Whoopsie gets two points for Minnesota. Yolita gets no points for Denver. Wasn't quite able to make it back into scoring position before it was called off. Looks like Moose definitely is back on the jam line for Denver, lining up against Breezes for Minnesota. Wax and Dougie exchange a high five uh, as one gets out of the penalty box and the other one heads to it. Moose definitely gets lead jammer status. Moose is such a beloved skater and such a beloved person. Everybody in the crowd is excited to see Moose succeed here tonight. Breezes fights her way out of the pack. Looks a little tired. Moose calls it off after scoring four points, but before Breeze can score any. and Tripodal Force on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby. Gets out is Lee Jammer. Homo Erratic. Trying to fight her way to the front. And does make it out of the pack. Centripetal Force calls it off, scoring six points. Keeping Denver to no points on that jam. Executor forced to recycle to the back of the pack, and it gives Cosmo an opportunity. But getting through the three very solid Minnesota blockers up front is not going to be easy. I see Pretty Reckless and Dougie and Roland Riz all up there, and they're going to force a recycle as Bizquick blocking for Minnesota, or uh, pivoting for Minnesota, pardon me, heads to the box and now joined by teammate Pretty Reckless. A lot of uh, blockers for Minnesota Roller Derby. All four of them, in fact, got a penalty in this jam. Only two can sit at a time, so they got to cycle through. What's interesting about that, too, is not only do we have to cycle through, but at least one blocker must re remain on the track at all times. So uh, if, if the blocker that last got a penalty, if everybody else is kind of cycling through, they are not allowed to leave because there would be no pack. So it's interesting. It's, it's a, a management thing for the officials as well to know how many blockers from the team have gotten a penalty yeah. and tell that blocker, that last blocker, you have a penalty but do not leave the track versus report to the box, which they normally say. It's, uh, it's, it's, 
it's kind of a tricky thing when everybody gets a penalty all at once. Yeah, I don't recommend it. No, it, it's also not good strategy as a team. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> but it's also uh, just as an official kind of a hard thing because, with again, without a pack, there is not really roller derby happening. Right, right. Well, uh, what I love about that is that these officials are so experienced and do it so well that without your explanation, we might not even know how tricky that situation was. We are seeing Chip a Tooth from Minnesota Roller Derby and Vinny for bruising altitude. Vinny does get out first and gets lead jammer status. Chip a Tooth being hung up behind that Denver wall. Chippatooth does score four points there. Vinny also scores four points on that jam. So it's an even jam. Yeah. No harm, no foul. Whoopsie Daisy makes it through from Minnesota Roller Derby, gets lead jammer status. So I think that was some excellent offensive blocking by Wax Poetic right off the jam line to help clear that path for Whoopsie. Yolita Applebaum stuck behind that tough, tough wall of Minnesota Roller Derby blockers. Gets knocked out by Wax Poetic and has to cycle back. Whoopsie Daisy, on the other hand, goes through for four points. Whoopsie hit a solid wall of four white jerseys and then got some help from Roland Riz, who came through like a bowling ball, broke that wall up, and allowed Whoopsie to make it through. I'm loving the offensive blocking. I'm loving the way the, the defensive blocking is constantly reforming for both sides. I just love roller derby. Like, I miss it when it's gone, you know? And this is some excellent roller derby we're seeing right here. We did have a star pass for Denver to Speedcat, who we saw play a couple games ago. Yes. Uh, aptly named. She's very fast. The pack is moving, but Whoopsie does make it through, calling off the jam immediately after four more points. The Whoopsie jam is always a good time. Whoopsie scored 16 points on that jam, bringing Minnesota's total up to 99, just one shy of the century mark. And bruising altitude score is 32. That's the first time I've looked at the clock this whole half. We're under nine and a half minutes left. I've just been fixated on the action because it's so much fun. It's been moving so fast. It's hard to take your eyes off of it or otherwise you'll lose what's happening. Absolutely. So Breeze has just had to recycle around. Moose is the jammer of record for Denver. Takes a shot, takes another shot. One more hip to pass and Moose is your lead jammer. Impossible for me personally to cheer against Moose. Not that announcers are cheering. And Moose calls off the jam. And all that seems fine. Apparently that's, yeah, that's fine, no problem. Bench coach Max in to talk to the officials has a little bit of a problem with how that one ended. There's some discussion amongst the officials. 
We're going to do an official timeout. The officials are going to talk about it. Maybe the way that ended wasn't totally cool. I don't know. They're going to talk about it. Bench coach Max definitely thinks it wasn't cool. Yep. I want to once again thank our sponsors, 187 Killer Pads. Killer as in awesome. Great pads. A lot of these skaters are wearing them right there on the track right now. And also our, our sponsor, Triple Eight Helmets. Excellent helmets worn by many of these skaters as well. Keeping these skaters safe, comfortably fit, with good technology. And uh, we thank them for being here at Have a Nice Day in St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay, it looks like the officials sorted that out. Moose definitely reporting to the box from the previous jam. Uh, looks like it was probably a cut call right at the end there. So even though Moose is starting in the box, Moose will be the jammer for Denver on this jam. It means that Minnesota Roller Derby is starting with a power jam with some tripletal force as the jammer. Wax gets a forearm and reports to the penalty box. Centripetal force also got a penalty. So even though lead jammer was called, oh, okay. No penalty called on centripetal force, still lead jammer. There was a lot to sort out there. Yeah, that was confusing. Uh, the communication was a little rough there. Yeah, I think Miller Light, the uh, jam ref was confused as to why Trippy went to the box. It might have been a mistake in number. Yeah. Wax is number 68, and centripetal force is 1618. So sure. they might have heard numbers wrong, and that might have been the cause of that. I'm not on the inside there, so I don't know that that's what's happening. There's a possibility, but though. But that seems like possibly the logical explanation behind that report to the box. Sure. Okay. Our tournament head, Spike, is going to come out and talk to the officials. You know it's serious when Spike comes out. Yeah. Some things have gone down, <laughs> and some more things are about to go down. <laughs> I think Spike's going to tell his officials to calm down. Do the communication. Be chill, y'all. You know what you're doing. It is the end of the day today. Uh, it's always a little bit hard. Our officials here have refed and NSO'd or non-skating officialed uh, multiple games this weekend. Almost all of them are probably on their fourth game, third game, fourth game this weekend. Absolutely. Uh, and, and as many of us know, when you do that so much, you get tired. And yeah. so it's always this game, this night, that it's a little bit like, hey, everybody calm down, get back into it. Um, it's going to be okay. We know what we're doing. You get a break after this <laughs> before you come back tomorrow and do it again. Yep. Um, but I think it will be uh, a nice little uh, chat here, and hopefully our officials get all on the same page so everybody does know what's going on, and then we'll be able to proceed safely and equitably with our game. Yes. 
I always like to equate this. Uh, you and I are now in both our second and a half game of calling in a row, yeah. and we get a little loopy, and we're sitting here just talking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Imagine if you had to skate every other game. Yeah, and had actual responsibilities. I mean, I, we don't even know if anybody's listening to us. Nope. Nope, there might be zero people listening to us. We're just over here. <laughs> <laughs> we might just be talking to ourselves. Well, I enjoy talking to you in any circumstance, particularly when other people might get to listen in. Well, Thank that's you, Allie. excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Rev. <laughs> I think there's someone who did hear us. Joss gave us a look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now, Joss is heading out there, too. What is happening here? I am not qualified to call a penalty for too many officials on the track. Okay, so maybe Trippy did have a penalty and now is reporting for that penalty. Well, that's now that it's been sorted. Okay. Vexing. Figuring it all out. We're going to get a little update here, possibly, from Jakob. Maybe. Awesome. So thank you, Jakob. Yes, so it is what we suspected. They were discussing the jammer penalty for Minnesota Roller Derby. Uh, the, the jammer was pulled back uh, because there was believed there was no penalty, but there was a penalty issued by the outside pack ref. So now Centripetal Force will sit and serve the rest of that penalty that she started in the previous jam. Yep. Meanwhile, oh boy. Rat was just about to get free as Lee Jammer and then got called for a penalty. So now we've got uh, the power jam has been reversed and it's trippy for Minnesota, who is the only jammer on the track. Now, I believe that Rat was not called for lead jam. So the lead jam status is still open when or if trippy gets through this pack with cleanly, uh, she can get lead jammer status. That's right. I don't think the Denver blockers want that to happen based the, on their behavior. No, they're, they're really doing their darndest to not let that happen. Yeah, really well done. Things got so exciting here, we stood up. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, so Rat is back. Also, both sets of blockers really holding these jammers back right now. And just, now Trippy forced to recycle. Just battling, just battling against those walls. Both, both jammers. This pack is moving very slowly. Trippy gets a little help and is able to get out and Le does finally get lead. Lead jam called with 17 seconds left in the jam. That's the kind of defense we know and love here at Minnesota Roller Derby. I mean, we've made it to the end of a jam with no lead being called before, so That's it right. is always right. possible that they just push on those walls the entire time. That's right. No That's points scored. Rough two minutes if you go that way. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Woo. Woo. Worth standing up for, though, for sure. If I can see correctly from here, that looks like Lexicutor and Cosmo on the line. Yep. I'm not always sure I'm doing it right, but they are facing us, so we can't see their back. It looks like Cosmo is lead jammer. They're very close together, though. Cosmo calls it off before they get back to the pack. Neither jammer is able to score, so they both get zero.
Looks like Chip a Tooth on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby and Vinny on the line for Bruising Altitude Denver. Wax is the blocker that's been in the box for Minnesota, now being replaced here by Mad Libs. But Chip is still your lead jammer for Minnesota. Chip wears the tank top jersey with a shoulder apparatus to keep the shoulders from separating. Health and safety first. Every time. All day, every day. Just under three minutes left in this period. We'll see how many more jams that are, it adds up to. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, some of these jams have been real quick. And some have been real long. Oh, that was close. Yolita Applebaum has lead jammer status, but is right there with Whoopsie. The pack has sped up. Well, that's fun. It's a real race here, folks. Yep. Can they do it? Yolita Applebaum pulls in front of Whoopsie. She's going to try to outskate her. The outside pack refs hate this. Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was fun. That's some old school roller derby. Fast derby. And actually, just a whole, just an all-out race by every skater on the track. Oh my, that is like old school Minnesota roller derby. That's like 20 years ago shit. We just got a text saying people are listening to us. They can hear us. Yikes! And they're listening. Well, crap. I'll <laughs> clean up my language then. Yeah. <laughs> this is so much fun, honestly. I'm having a blast here. This is great. We've got Moose definitely on the line for a bruising altitude and Breezes for Minnesota Roller Derby. Oh. Brutal on her way to the penalty box. I didn't see what the penalty was, but she's going to take a seat for 30 seconds. Breezes. Oh, finally makes it through. I mean, honestly, Breezes like took a breath and the whole defense just relaxed for half a second and then Breezes just snuck to the inside. It was really impressive. She honestly, I think she lulled her opponents into that. And then Breezes got through, calls off the jam. Yes, does call off the jam. Wasn't sure, but did decide to do that. Looking at Max as to what to do over there on the bench, Max wanted her to wait till the last possible second to call it off, so waited until Moose was about to hit that Minnesota roller girl roller derby, sorry, roller derby <laughs> line and called it right then so that there could be no points scored, but also use up the maximum amount of time. Oh, and, and we are at intermission. Yep, nobody called a timeout, so the period clock has ended. 15 minutes to go. Your score, 113 to 39 in favor of your Minnesota Roller Derby All-Stars. Thank you for being with us. Teams are getting settled. The officials are returning to the track. And we're getting ready to enjoy the second half of this game. We're starting with Minnesota Roller Derby with 113 points and bruising altitude with 39 points. 
Bruising Altitude is Denver's B team. We're back. We got Breezes on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby and Cosmo on the line for Bruising Altitude. Breezes gets lead jammer status. Oof. A lot of bodies hitting the floor out there. Brutal headed to the box for Minnesota. Breeza scores four points on that round. And Cosmo gets out of the pack. All right. Centripetal force against Homo Erratic. Better known as Trippy and Rat. Rat gets lead jammer status. Centripetal force passes Rat on the inside, though. See what happens here. Rat and Trippy try to engage. Rat goes down and calls it off. Trippy did get two points for Minnesota Roller Derby, though, before that call off. Bringing our score to 119 for Minnesota and 39 for Bruising Altitude. Lexicutor forced to recycle from Minnesota Roller Derby. Oh, a lot of whistles. We'll see what happens here. Vinny gets lead jammer status. Lexicutor hot on her tail. But then Lexicutor goes to the penalty box. We got a lot of people in the penalty box. I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of uh, great offensive blocking there by Denver's number 17 bold move buttons that even with a blocker disadvantage allowed Vinny to get through and score those points. Lexcuter hides behind Vinny there. Sneaks through. Then Vinny calls it off before Lexcuter can get any points. Or am I wrong? I might be wrong. There might be points. Looks like we got Chippatooth jamming for Minnesota immediately out into the lead as Yolita Applebaum is called to the penalty box. 
making this a power jam for Minnesota. Chip hits the deck, and uh, Gay, former Minnesota skater, current Denver captain, tries to make Chip recycle. Chip now through for four points. And the whole pack speeds up. Yolita Epbaum back on the track for Denver. The way Chippetooth just hit that Denver triangle and broke it up was really impressive. And even more impressive is how the triangle was managed to reform and slow her down. Yolita onto a first scoring pass as Chip is waiting to call off the jam till the last possible moment. And does so as Yolita hits the pack. So this looks like I, I, a strategy I'm seeing from Minnesota Roller Derby is having the pack speed up at specific times to keep the time drawing out so that they can delay in calling off the jam, eating up as much time off the clock as possible. Yeah, it's a very uh, interesting and so far effective strategy, I would say, as Whoopsie Daisy of Minnesota does get out and get lead yet again. Moose gets by after stashing the star onto a scoring pass. But Whoopsie gets those four points and calls it off. At halftime, I had a nice conversation with Roland Riz's parents who are proud that this is her first Minnesota Roller Derby A team bout. And there she is blocking for the team right now, number 20. Proud mom and dad. It's, it's adorable. It's lovely. It's very cute. Just a delightful time. So was her reaction to hearing that? <laughs> Cosmo is your lead jammer for this. And Minnesota Roller Derby does a star pass to Dougie. Cosmo... Gets four points and then calls it off. Max runs in from the bench, yep. has some things to say, and runs back. He's great at uh, taking the 20 seconds between and really running right out there, getting his point across and hustling back. That's true. Centripetal Force on the line versus Homo Erratic. Centripetal Force gets lead jammer status. Centripetal Force's jammer ref is going to check what, when that foot came out of bounds, so how many points were scored before that foot went out of bounds on the outside. And it looks like no points, zero points for either team on that one. I did see some of the Denver blockers congratulating each other with a high five for making that call off and awarding those no points. And indeed, it was a great job. It is pretty exciting when you have a jammer of that league, that caliber, and you can hold them to zero points. Lexicuter of Minnesota Roller Derby gets lead jammer status. Yep, 
Denver blocker Jane Austen Tatius went to the penalty box just now. I'm excited to say that name. Oh, Lex joined then by Lexicuter. That makes this a power jam for Denver's Vinny, who oh. then cut the track as I was saying it. Whoops. Yep. And we'll have a jammer exchange here. Speedcat back to the box for Denver as well as the pivot. This will be a two-minute jam. Two minutes in the second half of the last game of the day. It gets to be a long time. Four points for Lexi Cuter as she races around the track with the signature left hand on the back to increase aerodynamic cool skating. A recognizable move. It is, it is. Uh, and I think Lexi Cuter is one of the only people on the track who uses it regularly. That's the end of those two minutes. Lexicuter gets 20 points in that jam, taking our current score up to 155 for Minnesota Roller Derby and 55 points for Bruising Altitude. Mr. Mathman, you got anything to say about that? Well, I mean, obviously it's a 100-point lead, which is pretty fun. <laughs> it's a pretty fun lead. We'll just say it. It's a fun lead. Thank you for knowing that I wanted to talk about the score, because obviously I did. We need to say thank you to our referees for this game. We have Aaron Burr, Danger, uh, Jessica Gomez, Jackie, Sawyer Antics, Aces and Skates, Colonel Angus, Luscious, Mortal Comcat, Mother Flippin' Artist, Bippity Boppity Boom, Panic at the Lolo, Dropkick Daisy, Miller Light. Power Trip, Carmen Dragon, Chewbac Chewbac that's a hard one for me to say, Chewbacoffa, and Jakob the Swedish Ref. Yeah. It was easier to read things earlier today. <laughs> We're done with reading. Let's not read anything else. <laughs> uh, but seriously, our refs are doing such a fantastic job this weekend. Our officials, we need all of them. And they are so important to the integrity of the game, and we can't thank them enough for all that they're doing. Absolutely. We have Chip Tooth on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby and Yolita Applebaum for Denver. That is a rug rugby scrum-looking pack if ever I saw one. But it's going to be Chip a Tooth, lead jammer for Minnesota, 28 seconds into that pack, finally gets called lead. As Yolita Applebaum forced to recycle there by Wax Poetic. Yolita losing the star for just a second and deciding to stash it. Meanwhile, a solid wall of three blockers up front for Denver, slowing down Chip a Tooth who's trying to take advantage of Yolita breaking through Minnesota's wall, but still to no avail. Just some great blocking there by Denver. And Chip is going to call this one off just in time. Four points to zero for Minnesota. Woo. That's a maximum effort four points right there. When the teams are on these hockey benches and they're opening and closing the doors, uh, sometimes it sounds loud. Like, oh, did something happen over there? No, it's just how the doors work. It's fine. And I think the one bench has a door that sticks, 
Yeah. So it's even louder on that one door. Absolutely. And for safety's sake, they have to make sure the doors are both totally shut or all totally shut before the jam can start. Absolutely, yeah. I've seen what can happen when that fails to do in the Wild West of Derby, you know, 20 years ago when I started watching it. Uh, not good. Two points to zero on that jam for Denver's bruising altitude. Looks like we've got Breezes for Minnesota and Rat for Denver. Breezes out front lead, but Rat cuts to the inside and gets out front. So many whistles. We'll see what happens here. Brutal goes to the box for a forearm, it looks like. I think that time Breezes was expecting Minnesota to race again in the pack, and it didn't happen, but coming around turns two and three, like didn't see it until it was too late and called it off just in time before Rat could score. in triple force for Minnesota Roller Derby, jamming, and Vinny for bruising altitude. Vinny gets out and gets lead jammer status. Centripetal Force does make it out of the pack. Bruising altitude. Bench yelling at Vinny to call it off. So she does. After scoring four points. Executor on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby. Yolita Applebaum for Denver. Executor gets lead jammer status. Poison goes to the box for the cut. That jam ends quickly, holding both jammers at zero points. So this jam begins with Minnesota's pivot in the box. But the jammer's on the track and it's Chippatooth and she is your lead jammer. Gabe bashing through a path to get Rat through for Denver. So three points to zero, and Poisonberry Pie didn't even get out of the penalty box that time for Minnesota. Whoopsie on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby, and Moose on the line for Denver. It is convenient for us when they do that start pivot line start and then at the five second sale go back because then we can see who the jammers are. Yes. Moose definitely lead jammer. Again, we have a zero zero jam. 
both teams using the strategy to not let the other team score any points. So calling it off, even if it means they don't score any points. I have to say that strategy is uh, generally more effective when you're the team with the lead. But still, it's nice to trust your teammates and just let the next jam happen, you know? Breezes, jamming for Minnesota Roller Derby, gets lead jam status. Cosmo for Denver also gets out of the pack. If strategy holds true, this should be a quick jam. Oh, two to two on that one. We have an official review for Denver. I would wonder if Denver might be hoping for more points on that last pass. I don't know. Only speculating, but uh, it is one of the options. It is. We'll see after the official review is done what it was all about. This is a great time to take a little stretch break if you've been sitting in the same position for too long, stand up, shake it out, do some twists and turns. We've got just over 11 minutes left in this period. And we'll find out what this is all about right now. So Denver wanted a skating out of bounds. Uh, call on the Minnesota uh, Roller Derby Jammer. Uh, it was assessed that uh, it was a s action that was within the rules uh, that drove the skater out of bounds, that they called it off not because they skated out of bounds, but because the other jammer was coming into the pack. And so Denver does not retain that, uh, that official review and no a penalty is assessed. Thank you very much, Allie. Meanwhile, Centripetal Force jamming for Minnesota lead jammer as Vinny for Denver just gets out onto a scoring pass. So four points to zero is the score of that jam. Ten and a half minutes left in this bout. The listed score, 168 for Minnesota, 63 for Denver, bruising altitude. Lexicutor on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby, Yolita Applebaum for Denver. Lexicutor makes it out as lead jammer. Yolita trying to skate around the outside there and does make it out. The footwork that Lexicutor used to get through and 
on, on, into that scoring pass was just tremendous. I mean, there were bodies flying around, blockers working so hard to stay in front of her, and she managed to, you know, cut her feet one over the other and just stay in bounds to get through and get those points. Fantastic work from an experienced jammer. From here, that looks like it's chip a tooth on the line for Minnesota Roller Derby versus Homo Erratic for Denver. Chip just bulldozing her way through to get lead on that one. But Rat also out onto a scoring pass. Minnesota this time choosing not to race in the pack. And we got four points for Rat and Denver. And we'll see if points were scored by Minnesota. Excellent job there by Rat at any rate, racing around the track and taking that easy inside line. So that was a 4-0 jam in favor of Denver. Well done. Whoopsie daisy, jamming for Minnesota Roller Derby. Most definitely jamming for bruising altitude. Whoopsie daisy gets lead jammer status. Big hit there by Jane Ostentatious of Denver, but does get her, her sent to the box as she replaces Super Sonic, who is the previous Denver blocker in the box. Moose gets out of that pack, puts the star back on her helmet. One of my favorite moose things was the time that I was at the Minnesota State Fair and I saw moose across, like all the way across the way and there was a thousand people between us and I was like, oh, there's moose, that's cool. And I kept walking and then I heard moose shouting my name because she saw me and like yelled across a thousand people and I, I felt very special in that moment. That is very special. Breezes for Minnesota Roller Derby. Cosmo for Denver. Cosmo gets out by running up the inside. Gets that lead jammer status. Breezes also is out of the pack. One point for Denver. No points for Minnesota Roller Derby. A little over six minutes left in this half. So centripetal force of Minnesota is your lead jammer. As Vinny jamming for Denver also gets into a scoring pass. We saw an interesting thing happen there. There was too many blockers out on the track for Denver. So one was selected to return to the bench. Huh. Uh, we saw one come cruising out at the last minute. I'm not quite sure if there was meant to be a change or there was just a miscount. But that jam did start with five blockers for Denver on the track. Interesting that the remedy to that is just sending one to the bench and not somebody serving a penalty for some sort of that kind of thing. It 
So the real answer there is it depends. If it has it affected gameplay, right. then it is a penalty. But if it didn't affect gameplay, then it is just a return to the bench. Usually the officials can see that fast enough, tell somebody to return to the bench without it affecting the gameplay. In this case, they picked someone in the front of the pack who had not touched the jammer to return to the bench, did not affect gameplay. Right, excellent. Uh, in another sport, you might describe that as no harm, no foul. <laughs> Correct. Probably not this one, though. Anyway, that was a fantastic jam by Lexi Cuter. Scoring a few points for Minnesota. Chip a tooth back to the jam line for Minnesota with Moose definitely on the line for Denver. And it's going to be Chip around the outside, tiptoeing around lead jammer. Moose also gets through and gets a little mini whip there from Jane Ostentatious as Jane and Gay of Reckoning form a little wall up front for Denver. And they do force Chip to call that one off. Whoopsie Daisy takes the line for Minnesota Roller Derby versus Homo Erratic for Denver. Rhett does get out first and get that lead jammer status. And we have a star pass to Mad Libs for Minnesota Roller Derby. <laughs> Whoopsie collapses to the track laughing because that's the kind of night we're having here mm -hmm. at the Have a Nice Day tournament. Just about two and a half minutes left in this period. And as I say that, we get a timeout from Denver. A time out. We want to take one last chance here to thank our sponsors tonight, 187 Killer Pads, for keeping people's knees and wrists and elbows safe. Those are joints that are very much at risk when playing roller derby. And we also want to thank Triple Eight Helmets for sponsoring us. They do a great job of keeping people's brains safe. Safe brains makes for good derby, for it sure. It does, yes. Both benches taking a moment to go out and talk to their lineup that's on the track right now during this timeout doing some last minute strategizing. And apparently it's raining out. That might cut the humidity a little bit or add to it. We'll find out. We got Cosmo for Bruising Altitude who gets lead jammer status. Breezes out not too long after. Ooh, nice move by Cosmo on the outside there using her own skater to help her get around that Minnesota Roller Derby defensive wall. And scoring three points for Denver, Minnesota gets nothing on that one. Just about a minute and a half left on the period clock. Down to the final jam or two or three. As yeah, Trippie depending on how fast it goes, it might be three. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, it could be for sure. Well, Trippy got out real quick for Minnesota and got lead. And then got back into the pack and knocked over her own teammate, Mando. Mando. 
Centripetal Force does get that lead jammer status. Southern Discomfort heads to the box for Denver. Just excellent blocking here for Minnesota, forcing Vinny to recycle yet again. Is stashing the star and looking to potentially pass it on to the pivot. As Trippy just gets around and scores again, past the 200 point mark. Miserable. Hits centripetal force out to the inside. Forces Trippy to recycle back. But Trippy does power her way through the pack for four more points. Meanwhile, on Denver, we have a star pass uh, to Bold Moves button. And that's the end. Our unofficial score at the moment is Minnesota Roller Derby. 212 points to bruising altitude, 73 points. We'll see if there's any last minute discrepancies that need to be sorted out. What a tremendously fun evening of roller derby we've had and really a whole weekend of good times. Yes, this has been great. I have been missing roller derby and this was a wonderful way to experience it in the summer. Absolutely. So.